Hi everyone, Redux Project Ahead. Today we begin a new video series. What we are going to build is a small project with Redux and React, the Boot You Radar project. This is the project that some of you have built or will build on Udacity's React in Naruri. What we are going to cover at these videos is our own version of this project so we don't share any specs from Udacity. For those enrolled at Udacity, please take into consideration that you shouldn't copy this code. First, because you won't learn anything from doing that. And second, remember that Udacity has an anti-plagiarism protection mechanism. Therefore, you might be kicked out from Udacity. That being said, let's cover the basics. So let's go with some documentation here. Uh, this is the, these are the specs for the project. I kept them simple, so we don't uh, overwhelm with uh, a lot of docs and we get soon into the coding phase, but it's important that you keep you know, documented code and uh, you do the analyze part before getting into the code. So let's talk about what we need to cover on this project. What we are going to build is the game, Budurar, and one of the uh, features is that users need to be logged in to see wherever it has the application, and the, go, the game is played as this quote states, user is asked a question in the form of Budurar, and the application will show two options to the user, option A or option B, and the user will choose one of, of or one or the other. The application will let users answer questions, see already answered questions, create new, new ones, and see the top three users on a ranking leaderboard. So this is the basic approach of what we will build. So let's talk about the architecture. Uh, first, this is a, a front-end project, so we are not going to focus on the backend. It doesn't have a real backend. Uh, all the data will be just uh, what we call mock data, and it will be a um provided we i will provide you a data.js file where you have the initial data for for the project and this would be the questions and the uses for the application basically the architecture will base okay we read that information that's initial state of our application and we have to store our um, data in redux okay so uh, because we are not going to save the data in the backend or in that file uh, the, the, the main idea in this project is that when we refresh the project, all data will be lost. Uh, a lot of attempts will be uh, from students or users who want to approach this project will be to use local storage or other things to, to avoid this uh, behavior. But the, the idea behind this project is to learn where to use Redux and where not to use it. So basically, uh, we, with this approach, you learn things. It's not a real world application because in real-world applications, we save data in the backend or, or we keep information in the local storage of the uh, browser. But let's keep it simple by now. As I said, we are going to save things on in Redux, so we need to uh, manage that uh, state with the three actors we know on Redux, the store, the action creators, and the reducers. Also, uh, our application should be just be uh, installed and run with Jarring install and Jarring start. Of course, we can use npm. So anyone that downloads a project or clones from GitHub, just running these two commands will be uh, ha will should have this project running. Sometimes beginners, for, um, not beginners, sometimes are, they forget to save some packages they installed, and we we find that we they had missing dependencies. Of course, one of the parts of this architecture is that the application should, should run without no uh, any error. And of course, you should have your own readme that will this detail uh, give a detailed description of the project. I left uh, here is a link for a, a nice boilerplate, initial boilerplate for your readmes. Let's talk about uh, the first part of the functionality. So as we said, only authenticated, I have a lot of uh, spell words, uh, only authenticated users can see the page content. So the first view we see is the login view or the login page. Uh, the app should 
provide a wait for login users at the startup, this login page should be at this path. Uh, of course, users will be able to log in and log out. And when you get to log in the users, you should see the homepage, that is the route, the route, sorry, that uh, is the route path of our page. Or all our routes should be protected um, against uh, unauthenticated users. And this would be uh, when a, a user tries to access any web resource typing on the search bars, they should be redirected to login page first. And they have, and if they have logged in successfully, they are redirected to the request page or 404 page if that uh, resource doesn't exist. It's important to keep in mind that we are going to focus on redirecting our users. We are not going to use, if we are, if we need to show the login page to someone and we are accessing, you know, home page, we should change the URL. You know, we should see that I'm requesting root path, but uh, because I need to be logged in, I, I'm redirected to the login page. And that is how real world applications work. But sometimes if you are starting with React, you just say, okay, in this in this URL, I just show you these components and I just uh, load different components in the same URL, but that, it, that wouldn't be the approach. Okay, navigation bar, of course, because we have some pages, we just need to see the navigation bar and we should be able to uh, navigate our application with that navigation bar. And here we have the uh, basic routes we need to cover. Route uh, would be the homepage, uh, for adding a new question would be the slash at for seeing the leaderboard slash leaderboard and they say us okay navbar should be visible on all pages here you can you can be creative i will follow up approach of showing the navbar to all users even to not logging users just if they click there they just won't see uh, anything because they will be uh, again being redirected to the login page what is the home page? What we've seen blogging. Let's see what it is in this home page. Okay, here is where we are going to see, um, sometimes it's called the dashboard, where we're going to see our, all the questions of the application. It's going to be divided into unanswered questions, uh, and that would be the, the default view, and also the answered questions. The user interface needs to provide the user a way to move between both questions without moving the, uh, from that URL. So in the home page, we need to be able to see first all the questions that are on our application uh, that the login user hasn't answered to. And if I can click a button or a tab or a link or wherever your approach is in this uh, uh, user experience, um, they need to see, okay, they already answered by this by the user. Uh, also, this question should have a link to the detail of that question, so we can navigate to the uh, question detail, the page detail. Um, here, we are going to uh, order our, our questions by a descendant order based on dates. So this is, okay, just show the new ones on the top. Okay, uh, question detail. Um, this is where, if we, if we are, uh, when you go to see a question, and we, we saw that we can be redirected from the home page to see the, detail, the question detail, we can see two, two different uh, pages, we would say, two different components, because the question can be answered by the user or hasn't been answered yet. So we need to show different uh, UIs for this kind of question. So first, for those questions that we haven't uh, answered yet, Okay, just show the title, uh, just show the avatar of the user who, who posted that question, uh, posted the question, uh, I'm just going to remove that from there. Uh, name of the user who posted the questions, the two options to answer that question, and of course, the, give the user the, the possibility uh, to answer, to choose between both, uh, both uh, answers. Um, now, if we are watching the detail of a question that we already answered, we need to see the same information that before. Of course, the avatar, the name, the title, and uh, the two options to answer that question. But we have to see what question I have answered previously. We shouldn't be able to vote on that question again. Just, you know, this would be a read for, uh, view, not a, a, a form as the previous one. 
I also see some statistics of the questions answered, uh, the number of users who voted each, each option, or even a percentage. Of course, we have to protect against authentication. Uh, this page is also. What happens, because we are going to go to this kind of URL, these questions, question ID, this is going to be a dynamic URL. What happens is that uh, uh, anything that begins with questions, a slash, and wherever we have uh, after that, um, the, um, the routing at React will redirect us to the component. We can't protect against uh, different uh, shop uh, routes here uh, with just the routing. We have to do some coding inside our component to just check, okay, if we are asking for a question that exists in our in our project, um, we protect against authentication and that would be uh, just show logging um, after successfully uh, logged in, a user redirected to that question detail they asked, and if that question doesn't exist, show the login, but after uh, logging in, just show the 404 page. Leaderboard, the leaderboard is just, it will be uh, on the path uh, with the same name, with the leaderboard, and we just, just to show the top three users on our platform. Um, by default, we are just going to have three users in the default data I will provide. But um, for each user, you need to show the name of the user, the picture, or I just call it avatar. We called it avatar before. Just the avatar of the user, number of questions uh, asked by him, and number of questions answered by the user. So that would be the questions I created and the questions I answered, or you know, the questions I created and the answers I provided. And of also the score of that user. And the score would be just the number of questions created plus the number of questions answered. And also because it's a, a ranking, a little word, of course, we should show the uh, highest score first. And let's move to the Kanban board. So after reading project specs um, from the client or from whoever gives them to you, uh, we should create our own approach on the project, create our, 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 our tasks. And let's go and see how we'll, we will uh, approach this project. And later we will be coming back here to update uh, things. So first, and this is what we are doing right now, is uh, read and analyze the project specs. That should be the first approach and you have information there. And uh, so that is what we need to be doing on this video. Uh, later, we are going to cover, okay, just create your repository at GitHub. So we start coding uh, with uh, uh, source control and we can have our, our, our project organized in branches with commits and all this um, stuff. Uh, we will start creating just, you know, the basic React, React app to see that everything is working, that we are able to create our own uh, React app and uh, edit the boilerplate to, to remove uh, things that we don't use. Add the readme, document your, your, your project. So this would be very basic approach. Analyze your data file. This is because it's the unique part of the information that they give us besides the project specs. So we have what is the data our application will be handling. So, and it is important that we study more or less what data we have there. Also, uh, decide what CSS framework we want to use. Um, uh, there are a lot of frameworks and we can do it with just CSS uh, alone. I would recommend that approach for a lot of you, uh, but uh, because this uh, is based on a, a course uh, project that you need to do things uh, fast. And we need to be learning React and Redux, a lot of things on JavaScript, uh, maybe the best idea is to use a framework. So as you can see, I, I detailed the approach that I would recommend to any student or, or to any person that needs to approach a project. Now would be, okay, create your app, uh, mockup and name components. Of course, we could do that at the beginning a little uh, earlier, but because I want to do this uh, video series with coding and stuff, I don't want to be uh, doing this uh, analyzing part uh, uh, very long. So once we have our, our mockups, 
we I, I recommend just creating basic files, just showing uh, the name of the components and and so and being able to have those components there. So we can just address okay, just draw how are going to, and we are going to navigate between our our pages and how we are going to to move around. And this is one of the main ideas behind this project: learn Redux and improve your uh, React routing skills. So that is important. So once we have our components created and we understood how we are going to approach our navigation, we can implement our basic routing, just moving around and seeing that we are we are able to uh, just declare a route that we can't uh, move uh, with the links between uh, pages that we can't redirect from uh, a lifecycle event or inside a hook or things like that. So we uh, just focus on reading the documentation on React routing first and and, and leave that part. Okay, I just uh, conquer one part of, of the application first. Of course, later we will have to update and refactor our code with the real um, projects and designs and Redux, but that, um, at that moment we are very good. So now, after we created our mockups and everything, now we can implement our page designs. This can be done first. A lot of students and myself at the moment uh, did this at the end, but because this is a video series, we will address more or less at least the basic designs first. And um, I'm not going to do a very, very nice design. I'm just going to do the basic that comes from the CSS framework. I will throw just some, some colors. Uh, we are maybe later in another video series, we will just get into uh, colors and, and UX experience and accessibility of websites, but this is not the idea behind this project. Okay, now you should be very confident once you get here because you have understood what we have to build. You have designed your application, you have your design implemented, you have routing and you have everything. So now it's time to go and hit uh, Redux. So now we will just implement the libraries on Redux, see that everything is working, that we don't have uh, any packages uh, breaking another packages that we are you know, using the, the latest version of Redux. And we will begin with our pages here. We haven't covered the naming because we are going to do it in the next video in the first cards. But here we will be implementing login first. So we, we make sure that we are uh, using uh, authenticating users as well. Just implement home, the home page, uh, new page, leaderboard, logout, question detail page. Uh, why I just leave the question detail page until the end? Uh, because I prefer to just go and add Redux and just say, okay, just logging a user and log out it, him or her, because it's just uh, reading and updating part of the Redux, but with a basic um, data. It, it can be just the ID of the user. Uh, so we, we cover that everything works. Later, we just implement the homepage that is just winning from Redux. Uh, and with the new question, just we can just create a simple question. Readerboard is re it's also reading information and this kind of stuff. I think I'm going to just move the, the, the logout here. I think we should address login and logout at the same time. Um, and I will leave the question until page because it has these two states where, okay, I'm seeing an answer question. I see an answer question. I have to go with a lot of statistics here. So I leave it for the end. Implement a 404 page. That should be basic. And I left for the end this implement protected routes and implement redirections. So we don't um, confuse ourselves with this stuff. But uh, I know that maybe we will address it before because of the way how uh, React works and Redux works, we might address it uh, uh, before. But uh, this is the, the, the Kanban board. We are going to use it. So now I just, we have already read all the project specs and so the Kanban board. So we've completed our first, first task. I know that is the most boring part. Uh, you want to see coding. So we just will get into this task in the next video. We go and move around the tasks faster, uh, create the React app, hands on I just update the Kanban board at the end. So uh, I'm just going to leave it for the next video. Hope you stay safe. See you in the next video.
and goodbye.